Welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. If you have not already, please subscribe and click the bell for updates. It is always a pleasure to speak to you through his words. God's blessings be upon you. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. There are times in all our lives where things happen and don't turn out as we hoped for. We can choose to be grumpy or we can choose to be happy under God's guidance. We can do it. Amen? Pastor, I can't do it. I get mad easily, you might say. No, you can do it. God said he would never give us anything we could not get through. If your, if your aspiration is awesome enough, you can do whatever you want when life throws you lemons. There is a biochemical arrogance rushing around in the Christian body of followers today I like to call it no germ it is a mindset of uncertainty and skepticism and a lack of trust and faith in God this defiance is of the devil and is not of God the devil would have us to think that we are insignificant or that we cannot do something or that God is God of lesser things. God wants us to think positively and to have the opposite of a no germ attitude and to have an I can attitude. Paul speaks in Philippians about an I can attitude. He inspires the church of Philippi that even though they may be going through tough times, through Christ they can do all things. God wants us to have that kind of mindset today, no matter what we're facing. How do we get over the no germ? We need to know that our best, all in all power, is found in God and God alone. Separately from God, we really can't do anything. When we get attached to the best power source, which is Jesus, we can do all things fitting to his will and to his purpose. The Lord is my power and my Savior. God is the supreme power and source. We've got to get coupled to the source. Far too often we misplace faith in God and get a no germ due to anxiety and angst. God says in his word, do not be afraid. Lo, I am with thee always, even unto the end. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. We dread trying things because of terror of the unknown. We'd just rather go on ahead and say no. 
we have to grasp the power God has granted upon us. Fright and worry are tools of the enemy. We need to identify the power God has given us over him. The Bible says, Resist the devil and he will flee. We must get over our fears in order to overcome a no germ. Remember the little engine that could? We must believe that we can do whatever we're trying to do. God says, If you have faith in the size of a mustard seed, then you can tell that mountain to move, and it will move. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We must have faith in things we don't see. You must see yourself in the future and in the spirit. God will give you revelation. You can do it. You must begin to say, I am here now. I won't always be this way, for suffering never lasts right now. It's in the spirit, but after a time. I will see it in the ordinary. If I just hold on, do not give up, do not let go, and wait. God is faithful and he will do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. How many of us ever live our lives to the full ability? How many even step out of our comfort zone? So many people never think outside the box. They get relaxed in life with their daily and weekly habits they can set their clock by what event transpires through the week. You know, like it must be Tuesday because we always have Kentucky Fried Chicken on Tuesday. The status quo, it's not like it occurs on purpose. It just kind of slinks in and sets up a tent in the corner for most people, just for a visit and then never goes. But what if it could be unlike? You know to have the aptitude and the devotion to live life above the normal. To live life beyond the box, the bulk of the time and like it. What if we called ourselves zealous Christians? There would be nothing with God's help that jointly could not be achieved. All the dreams we've had would come to light. We would no longer be limited by our mind. There would not be any unachievable goals. Is it likely to live past our wildest dreams? The Bible says it is. We find this in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19 to 21. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. God wants us to think that way. Or else, why would he say for us to do anything he didn't mean? 
when you think about it, that context, it's exciting to know that this was written for our benefit. If God has your back, then make your plans huge. You can do it. Do you think God wouldn't do for you what he did for numerous people mentioned in the Bible? You can do it with God's help. Few things in this world are more influential than a positive push, a smile, a world of confidence and faith. You can do it when things get tough. Whatever you're going through, there's a silver lining at the end of it. It may seem hard to get to it, but you can do it. Just keep driving towards it and you'll find the positive side of things. You've done it before and you can do it now. See the positive option. Transmit the significant power of your vexation and turn it into positive, operative, overpowering purpose. There's a time in your life where you're not quite sure where you are. You think all's flawless, but it's not perfect. Then, one day you wake up and you can't quite picture yourself in the state you're in. But the secret is, if you can picture yourself doing anything in life, you can do it. The mind is the edge. As long as the mind can foresee the fact that you can do anything, you can do it as long as you believe 100%. You can do what you must do. Occasionally you can do it even better than you think you can. It's never too late to reinforce the base of faith. There is always time. With faith in God you can atone and beg for forgiveness. There is someone you can forgive. There is someone you can thank. There is someone you can serve and lift. You can do it wherever you are and however alone and deserted you may feel. Everyone has a part to play. We have the power. You can do it when your back is to it. God has this. So many people out there nosedive not because they don't have skill, but because they don't have the soul to go through difficulty. You can do it with God's help. The world is not all sunshine and rainbows. It is a very unkind and foul place. I do not care how strong you are. It will knock you to your knees and keep you there forever if you let it. You will come across some disappointments when you're in that gloom, but you can do it with God's guidance. You will want to sit there and wait for the brightness to come. Let God help you do it. You should not wait. The only way out is to face your fears, to become your own light. God gave you the spark. Now use it. A lot of times you will see failure. We are all still learning. But in that instance, I want you to think of the power of you.
Remember, God granted you the power within your heart. You will transform the world even when you are stressed, even when you're hopeless and you feel like other folks have given up on you. Do not give up on yourself. If you have a confidence, you can do anything. The only way you grow, that is to exercise it. You can do it if you put your mind to it, your back into it, and trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ, to get you through. You must grow your soul to become the ultimate you. You must get relaxed with fear and failure. They must become your best friends. Getting used to fear and failure can make you stronger under God's eyes. These two things move the needle of light. We have to continue to push ourselves because our true potential will never be matched with God at our side. No one person is going to hit us as hard as life. You must keep moving forward because God knows how much you can take and keep moving forward. Now, if you know what you're worth, I'm glad you can tell what you are worth, but you have to be willing to take it all under God. The future rewards those who press on with perseverance and firm resolve. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. You don't have time to complain. We've got work to do under God's watchful eyes. Whatever motivates you, whatever pushes you, whatever drives you, you can do all things through Jesus Christ our Savior. If that request is returnable, if no one has to call you, if no one has to nudge you, if no one has to gift you, if no one has to give you anything, if you are committed and controlled, you can have it. You can take possession. Take tremendous possession. Don't make vindications. Don't blame any person or anything. God put you here to endure and you can do it with His hands guiding you. Get in charge of your ego. Take possession of everything in your world that is so good under God. Then take back possession of your mistakes, your shortfalls, your problems, and tell God about them. He can help you through. Then with God's help, you can take possession of the solution that will get those troubles solved. Take possession of your mission in life. Take possession of your job, your team, your future, and of your life to victory in Jesus. You can live your dream. It's essential that you have a plan of action. Keep the vision of your ideal life with God and never give up on your dreams. God has made you creative and persistent. You must take your own accountability to make the life under God happen. It is hard, but easy in life is not an option. When life hammers you down, jump back up. You can do it 
it's not over until we win our place with God. Seema Chowdhury wrote, Things may seem hard for you right now. You may not think of a way to how. Solve problems that's standing in the way. And are blocking sunshine to touch your day. But I know and believe, and that's true, that with a little courage you can do. And you can handle your problems with care. If only you can learn to banish your fear. So have faith in you and your God. For he can help when things are odd. And request him to grant you courage's kit. So you can know that you can surely do it. I love this poem. It bas it's basically saying you can do all things with God. Ronell Warren Allman wrote, Yes, you can do it. You have the ability. Success awaits you. Zero in on the opportunity. Fulfill your world. Just find your balance. Have determination to be great. Strive for excellence. Ronell as well as I can see you can do it because God has got this. This is a daily reminder to relax, to not get angry over small things, to stay calm. This is a daily reminder to be yourself, to not care what people think, to know you can be anything. This is a daily reminder to love yourself, to not hurt yourself, to not work yourself up. This is a daily reminder that you are beautiful, that you are amazing, that you will succeed. This is a daily reminder to always have hope, to have faith, and to know everything will be okay. This is a daily reminder that you have made it so far already, that you haven't given up, that whatever you're doing is right, and that you are going to be amazing. Don't give up. Keep holding on and believing. A lady by the name of Nicolette wrote this, and it is very inspiring to read when you need to remember that you can do all things through God. When you feel like you can't do anything, remember Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. When you are afraid to do something, remember 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. If you don't feel loved remember 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. If you are feeling scared of the world, remember 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you are feeling abandoned, remember Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. When you know 
that life is a test. You understand that nothing is unimportant in your life. But you can do it with God at your side. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its griefs. It empties today of its vigor. So don't worry. You can do it. God does not give us all we want. But he does fulfill his vows guiding us along the best and straightest, straightest paths to himself. You can do it with his help. Let God's vows shine on your setbacks. God's got your back. Let this inspire those of you who belong to Christ. The thunderstorm may be wild, but it is only brief. The clouds that are briefly lurching over your head will pass, and then you will have fair weather and everlasting sunshine of glory. All may not be perfect. There are things that may need alteration, but you have the faith to be happy today. God does not take you in a straight line. There are turns and curves. It may not occur the way you believed, but the regrets, the bad breaks, are all a part of God's plan. People have enough folks pushing them down, indicating their blunders. Why don't you become the one to trust them up, see the top in them, and help them get free? Instead of judging folks, why not take that same time to pray for them, to reach out, to let them know that you have faith in them? Do not let a brief period of being unpleasant keep you from a perpetual blessing. Yes, it takes self-control. Yes, it's painful. But your calling is at stake. The only control people have over you is the control you give them. They don't verify your value. They can't reduce your self-worth. Life is too brief to live at odds, belligerent, quarreling over things that don't matter. Be a hawk and rise above it. Remember you can do it with God's help. Being a Christian is more than daily procedure whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ, which is something you can do with God's help. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. It's not how much we give, but how much we love. And the love that we put into giving. Let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. Be the living face of God's kindness. Kindness in your face. Kindness in your eyes. Kindness in your smile. I am not sure just what heaven will be like. I know that when we die and it comes time for God to judge us, He will not ask how many good things you have done in your life. Rather, He will ask how much love did you put into what you did. Remember, you can do it with God's help. Faith is trusting beforehand what will only make sense afterwards. Faith does not always mean 
that God alters your situation. Occasionally it means he alters you. It would be a shame for God to want to do more and for you to settle for less. Great moves of God are typically led by simple acts of compliance. Don't fear let down. Fear faithfulness. Don't fear assault. Fear apathy. Don't fear refusal. Fear regret. You can't fulfill your mission in your comfort zone. Do not let your lack of poise become the death of your calling. Do not let a period of aloneness to become a lifestyle of gloom. Your refusal in one period can lead to your purpose in the next. Your supreme message will be spoken by your life, not your lips. You cannot breathe the air of worry and expect to live in an atmosphere of peace. God will call you outside of your well-being, not your ability. Your development begins where your excuses end. Recognizing who is with you is more vital than knowing where you're going. <coughs> Wherever you are going, you can do it with God. The surest way to be happy is to seek happiness for others. You can do it through Jesus Christ. We have the power. In this journey called life, we are assigned to serve our Savior by being good and faithful to Him. That vesting is given and supported by God Himself. We do not achieve anything with wealth and riches. For faithfulness without peace is temporal, but peace along with faithfulness is eternal. We live our lives being inspired to create a faithful temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. We serve with prayer, love, relief of sorrow of others, and honest relations. We too, if we desire to do what is faithful according to God's inspired purpose, we shall be lied about belittled and despised by those who neither know us nor wish to know us. We shall be misunderstood and scrutinized by those whose minds are fixed, not in, entwined in general agreements, whether re religious or secular. Those who see self-love as their only existence will devalue our work and defame our name. It has been done to me. It can be done to any of us. Also, we may suffer rejection by those in whom we once wisely trusted and whom we may have loved faithfully. Some begin to let God lead in their lives so well and then human veracity and the false God of this world shades their minds. They may lose sight of their true assignment and be as easily corrupted by public opinion. What is that assignment? It is to live your best life and stay faithful to what God reveals to us. It is to stand upon our watch on the wall and to offer a faithful hand to those whom but for our help would fail and fall. We can prevail with inspired, tough, and good-natured commitment to the eternal. 
we need not grow sad in letting God pilot us. Even though age may sadden us and the passing years sentence us to limitations in our health and lassitude of mind. May our Savior Jesus Christ grant to each of us the faithful happiness and strength to continue in every good work. May He at the end of our living give His guidance and grant to each of us the reward of them that are faithful unto death, a crown of eternal life. Be one with the Lord. Read or listen to your Bible every day. Pray often, even if it is just to get something you may need. It is always good to pray for what we need, but never pray for what we want, because wants are not answered. Needs are greater in this life. So if we need anything, pray devotedly and appreciatively. These thoughts are all for the congregation of this channel, with my deepest respect and my prayers that they may strengthen our happiness, our faith, and uplift our hearts. You can do it. God's got this. God's blessings be upon you all, and have a good week.